Hey, good morning everybody and welcome to the vlog. Have you ever had one of those days that you're just like, it's gonna be an amazing day today? Well, that's how I feel. I think today is gonna be an incredible day and I hope the start of your day is gonna be amazing. Regardless of what's going on, let's just push it aside right now and have a great day together. Chicken strip is absolutely incredible and you can see the socialization with this guy has come such a long way. Still gets a little bit crazy when you first take him out, but literally, not kidding, 10 seconds after you take him out, he turns into this. and. Every now and then he'll do a little bit of an explosion where he'll try to get away, but for the most part, once he really, really calms down, you can have him out for an hour. And literally he'll sit in your hand. I can literally just put him on my shoulder like this if I want to, and he'll just hang out with me just like this. So it's pretty amazing that just those threads of trust that we continue to build with him are paying off so much. And again, the fact that he's the only albino Nile monitor that we know, obviously he's a male, Abasuk, who's a female, and hopefully here and maybe next year we can get these guys breeding, which I think will be pretty pretty dang awesome. Could you imagine het for albinos and het for melanistic? So they'd be double het for snow because they're both recessive mutations, or at least we think they're both recessive mutations. There's nothing to tell us that they're not because of course the melanistic Asian water monitors are, and we know the albino monitors have always been recessive as well. So hopefully we can maybe, you know, three, four years from now actually have some of the rarest monitor lizards on the planet. And it's just crazy to think that we have Abasuku and Chicken Strip, you know, one of ones. I mean, actually, I I think last year I saw a baby Black Nile again that was a baby, but I don't know if anyone bought it or if it was just a picture. Maybe it even was a picture of Abasuku when it was a baby. I'm not 100% sure, but as far as I know right now, she's the only Black Nile monitor on the planet, which is pretty cool. And again, she is such an absolute sweetheart. So it's cool that I get to come in every day and see two of the rarest monitors on the planet. And one day, I sure hope that these guys will go together. You can see she's a chunker right now. She is definitely ready to breed. Again, maybe another year in Chicken Strip, we can put these guys together. That would be unbelievable. Maybe one of the coolest accomplishments of my entire career, if it's lucky. So I don't want to count my eggs because we still have another year raising Chicken Strip up. And certainly we got to keep Abasuku as amazing as she is right now. So uh, fingers crossed guys, but I know I count my blessings every day to have both of these amazing animals. Just my daily Ivy update. Looks like finally that bloat in the center went down quite a bit. So every day now you're going to see less and less. Probably by tomorrow you'll be able to just barely see a lump in her uh, so she's digesting well uh, definitely a trip and if I hadn't had so much experience I would have been freaking out to be honest with you because yesterday she looked like she was gonna literally explode and it was such a wild thing but uh, again uh, obsessed with my green anaconda I hope you guys are enjoying kind of taking along on this crazy journey of this girl and uh, obviously I've got to get back in here and do a big water change again so uh, uh, she's keeping me busy but uh, I love her to death I'm gonna share with you guys a few of the Asian rats that that we are working with. Uh, we don't work with a whole lot right now. In the past, we used to work with a bunch of different ones, so I'm kind of excited about the ones that we do have. Uh, this year, we're breeding some Mandarin rat snakes. These are definitely one of my all-time favorites. Uh, we've, we have worked with these for years. These are some new bloodlines that we've raised up. This will be first year breeding, so seem to be going pretty good, so hopefully we'll get some eggs from these. This girl here is actually a Taiwan beauty snake, and this one really takes me back. Uh, when Brian and I, in our first few years, I think being together, we used to have one or two of these guys. Uh, again, they were mainly pets. I think, well, I take that back. We did work with some different kinds of beauty snakes. I don't know that we bred the Taiwan, but I know we had the blue beauties at one point. Uh, these guys get huge. So this is only a year old. It's already got some good size on her. We're not really going to breed her. We only have the one. So uh, I think she's pretty much getting ready to go over to the Reptarium because this will be a really cool addition. Like I said, they get a really impressive size and with a really nice attitude, it's a nice animal to be able to share with everybody. Another favorite in the rat snakes are the rhino rats. So we've been raising some up. This is a guy that uh, will probably be in the breeding project next year. You gotta love these animals. So this is at the size now where the green is coming out and I'm sure Brian showed you the babies. They hatch out a really boring, almost kind of grayish color and it takes about a year for the green green and those little blue flecks to really come out. They're a fun animal to work with, a little bit different because they kind of go back and forth. Sometimes they want fish if they get picky, but uh, definitely worth working with. 
because they are definitely very cool. Getting a little time with my girl Salty here. She's absolutely incredible. And you know, now that we're not open, you know, there are hundreds of people that hold her every week when we're open. I have to work with her a little bit more because I don't want to lose that training with her to keep her calm and keep her extremely amazing. And she's getting so big and their enclosure is finally looking nice and clean. That bacteria bloom is gone. And so now it's really cool. So it's amazing. She's an amazing animal and I'm so lucky to have her. But uh, as you can see, whoop, gotta work with her a lot because she's definitely getting a little bit more hyper. So I just have to get her out even more often and can't wait till we open again so we can resume that training where uh, she stays still in people's hands because I tell you what, uh, she's getting too big to be a, a, a little brat, that's for sure. I grew up in Alabama. Like my dad's always been really big about science. He's a scientist himself. And one time we'd actually seen an alligator snapping turtle. We had actually pulled over, we saw it. It was actually trying to cross the road and a lot of people were moving around it and stuff and it was creating a lot of traffic. So my dad got out and he was trying to show me. He goes, he goes all right, well, the one thing you have to always remember is don't turn these guys around. Don't put them back where they came from. Let them go where they're going because there's a reason they're heading that direction. So just we just helped him across the street. We helped him about his way. And it was one of the really, really pinnacle points in my life when I was a kid because I remember that. And I did it. And I always, always remember to respect those animals, respect where they come from, and really, really, and it really, really inspired me to love them more. So I don't know if you guys remember actually last year, he wasn't really, like, he was sort of hesitant to actually take food. Now, this time of year, he's he's just crushing food. I mean, like, every day I come out, I come here in the morning and do my morning checks. We're walking around here with Brian, and Brian's always pointing out, like, look, Bowser's ready to eat right now. And we're just like, oh, dude, let's do it. Come on, this is gonna be fun. Of course, my girl Lucy uh, never ceases to mess up her cage. This time she pooped over here, she pooped over here. Uh, Water is nasty. So I'm gonna go ahead and take her out, do a little socializing with her. And uh, Bruce, thankfully, is gonna clean up the cage while I'm actually messing with Lucy. Let's, so let's just see what kind of mood she's in. Hey girl. Hey baby. You're okay. You're okay. Whoa! Yep. Okay. So she's a little bit, uh, a little hyper today. Come on, girl. All right. Uh-oh. So this happens. I mean, it's just the way it is. We're gonna be all right. We'll get her. We'll get her. Come on, girl. You're okay, girl. There you go, now get her backside out. Yeah. You can start, right? Start. Alright, and as you can see, you know, even when we get a rocky start, it's just about not having her have a bad experience with us, right? Just like we socialize our monitor lizards, we want to do the same kind of thing with our snakes, right? We want them to understand that we're not bad, right? She has the same memory as a monitor lizard, and if she has a memory of like a bad experience where we're maybe grabbing her or manhandling her, of course she's probably going to have that in her mind, and she's not going to trust us as much. So the idea is, is to continue to build that trust, and uh, again, she may be in a rocky mood to start with. As you can see, if I give her the respect that she deserves, there's nothing to be concerned about, right? She's not trying to bite me now. She's completely placid. I can move around with her. I can interact with her. She's just one big, powerful snake. And we've been talking about, you know, wondering if you could do kind of the same target training with Lucy or other snakes. We saw something on King Cobras where they were able to actually target train King Cobras. And actually my friends at the Columbus Zoo used to have some King Cobras that when they started to flood the cage with water, they would immediately go into their shift box. So as soon as they heard water running, they would go into their shift box. So that means that they can learn. So I'm not sure if you guys think we should, but maybe we'll come up with some sort of a target training for Lucy. Uh, or maybe some of our other big retics and see if that works. But just take a look at how big that animal is. That is one impressive snake. Oh my gosh. So Bruce is just gonna have to clean his cage up. And then we'll get her back in here and uh, again, have that really positive thread of experience with letting her have a little free time, but also us interacting with her to where she doesn't feel like we're bad. And then ultimately get her back in her cage and she's gonna be like, all right, that wasn't too bad. Doesn't mean that the next time she's not gonna strike at me again, but it does mean that she can at least respect me and uh, we don't have to really fear each other, if that makes any sense. Time to 
my girl Lucy to go back home. Come on, baby. Got a clean house now. All good. Come on. Up you go, baby girl. Up you go. Up. She is getting heavy, I tell you what. Either I'm getting weaker or she's getting bigger. I'm not sure which one's happening. There you go, baby. There you go. And up in the tree is where she'll go. There she goes. So predictable. What a good snake, huh? Successful experience for her. Yeah, she's got a nice time out, a little exercise, and now she gets to go in and curl up like a green tree python on top of her enclosure. <laughs> that is so cool. Could you imagine being in Indonesia and walking in the rainforest and coming across that? Whew, tell ya, that's an impressive snake, it really is. All these years later, I'm still impressed by her every time I see her. Take a look at this girl right here. I'm really gently holding her. This is an ovulation from a rough scale sand boa. These are what they call conicus, and they're actually a smaller sand boa. This is as big as they get, obviously, because it's gravid. They'll get a little bit larger, but she'll probably have anywhere from like six to 10 babies, something like that, and that is a huge ovulation. So essentially, she'll have babies about three months from now. And of course, sand boas are what they call sexually dimorphic, which basically just means this is an adult male here. This is as big as it's going to get. Rarely do you see male samboas in most species that are much larger than this. They're typically really small compared to the female. They look exactly the same as a female. They just get much, much smaller. So interestingly enough is that these guys will feed just like normal when they're babies. But once they hit about adult size, a male samboa sometimes will only eat six to ten meals per year. And she keeps me guessing. Of course, Ivy now has climbed up on the land. I was a little surprised to see her when I walked over just an hour ago. She was in the water. Now she apparently wants to spend a little time on land and uh, again that lump looks huge but trust me it's about half the size it was yesterday so by tomorrow it'll probably be half the size again and I don't know will she hang out on land will she go back in the water your guess is as good as mine, but that's awesome. Isn't it crazy? And I hope that you guys are enjoying kind of learning the behavior of an anaconda with this type of exhibit as much as I am because it's, uh, again, I've said it before, I'm obsessed, I'm fascinated, I'm all the things. Absolutely wonderful and she's looking great. So uh, good job, Ivy, I love you so much, girl. I hope you feel better tomorrow. Time to unbox. Thanks, Robbie Wilson, for these. Uh, these <laughs> uh, this is from Doug uh, in Illinois. Hey, this is not the time where you want a cut or an open wound. No, that is, that is true. You just gotta play <laughs> so it calm safe. Down. Gotta calm play down. it safe. Uh, all right, so what do we have here? Uh, let's see. Oh, oh my gosh, there's all kinds of stuff. It's our ridiculous Rackies. Uh, so oh, he works stickers. with Rackadacalus, obviously. And this is a dope shirt. Are you kidding me right now? <laughs> That's that cute. is a really good shirt. Love the vlog. I know you're building a gecko room for the new Caledonian species. Keep me in mind for lychees. Uh, yes, D Doug, seriously, reach out to us. I would love to talk to you about lychees for sure because we want to get some more of those. We want to get some more Chihuahua stuff. Uh, just a whole bunch of different things. So yes, this is nice uh, paper here. This is actually watermelon. Oh wait, this has my name on it. Oh, this is yours? Okay. You can open that. What does it say? <laughs> I just want to pet wine and drink my dog. Yeah. Or wait. <laughs> That's what I say after the water. Yeah. <laughs> I can't believe that actually happened. That's awesome. Okay, so we got, oh, this is awesome. Look at this. That is absolutely Here's incredible. This. From Alberta, Canada, my name is Jasmine. I've been a big fan for about a year now. I love all your animals. I've included a piece of diamond art that was made by herself. I made it a while ago and didn't know what I was doing uh, with it yet, so she sent it to us, so thank you so much. Steve in Pennsylvania. Thank you, Steve. Oh my gosh, it's oh a Lord. sloth. Team sloth. <laughs> 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 we'll get what there when we get there. <laughs> That's, <laughs> That's great. Uh, love watching the vlog and the new oh. podcast too. I thought I'd jump on the sloth bandwagon and send you a shirt. A uh, group of us uh, ride bikes together and we had these <laughs> shirts made. So these shirts were actually made for you guys. That is awesome. I hope you get up there. I hope you get up to the Reptarium and visit one time when we're back open. Thank you, Steve. Seriously. So uh, <laughs> thank you guys as always. You're amazing. Uh, in this, these times, you guys uplift us in everything you do. And it certainly is cool to be able to work with monitors that are so rare and hopefully one day have the ability to potentially produce them that would be so cool and I hope that you enjoyed the video and if you aren't too sick of me yet you can uh, check a playlist right out here of a bunch of really cool egg cutting because I know that's coming up pretty soon you can also listen to my podcast called checking in you can subscribe to that right over here subscribe to the vlog channel on this side if you don't mind have an absolutely wonderful day remember be kind to someone and I promise I'll see you guys tomorrow